I'm Paul Roram from Princeton Seminary, and I'm glad to be able to introduce a new series of books from Fortress Press. I'll share the official statement first and then give some examples and personal comments afterwards. Mapping the Tradition is a new series from Fortress Press of brief, compact guides to pivotal thinkers in Christian history. Each volume in this series will focus upon a particular figure and provide a concise, lucid introduction to the central features of each thinker's work and sketches the lasting significance of that thinker for the history of Christian theology. Each volume will utilize primary source works from the particular thinker as an entry point for exposition and exploration. Guided by leading scholars in history and theology, primary source texts are reproduced with explanatory commentary and are accompanied by orientational essays to the context, contours, and historical and conceptual legacy of the corpus. Works in this series, in addition to providing key overviews and orientation, aim to be brief for portability and ease of use. They are not comprehensive encyclopedic reference, but starting points for understanding central figures and plotting the course of ideas and texts through the history of the tradition. As such, they are designed for beginning and intermediate students, as well as interested general readers, who will benefit from clear, helpful surveys of thinkers, texts, and theologies from across the epochs of Christian history, and introduction to major issues and key historical and intellectual points of development. Texts in this series are intended to be duly useful in classroom settings for teaching, small group reading, discussion, as well as starting points for research. Volumes will be up to date in scholarship and will feature solid but unobtrusive footnotes, guided introductions to the period and topic at hand, and bibliographies to foster further research. Now, there are many books on these classic theologians of Anselm and Aquinas from the Middle Ages, as well as Catherine of Siena, or Augustine or Athanasius from the early church, Luther and Calvin, of course, Teresa of Avila, or modern figures like Schleiermacher and Kierkegaard. But our series has a few distinctive features I'd like to point out. First of all, we do really mean brief. These will not exceed 100 pages, about 50,000 words, and it'll be a challenge to introduce the theologian in that small space. Secondly, they will introduce a theologian by way of a particular iconic central work guiding the reader through a classic book or an essay by that theologian in the form of a commentary. Third, and perhaps most distinctive, we intend these volumes to cover not only the thinker, but also the legacy, the reception history, how this theologian was received and critiqued or followed in the centuries following. To do all that in 100 pages will be a challenge indeed. Perhaps some examples would be the best way to illustrate the series. A press called Fortress needs to cover Martin Luther, of course. We're fortunate to have Robert Kolb commit to doing the Luther volume. Kolb will introduce Luther briefly, guide the reader through one particular and classic essay, The Freedom of a Christian, in which Luther talks about the freedom in the gospel, but the service to the neighbor in love. Then Kolb will trace the history of Luther reception by special reference to the theme of freedom and service. Through the immediate generations following Luther, but also through the Enlightenment and modern notions of freedom, all the way to the current emphasis toward the 500th anniversary. A second example is my own volume, which will appear later this year on Dionysius, or pseudo-Dionysius. Now that's not a household word, not even in my house, but his seminal essay, The Mystical Theology, influenced over a thousand years of mysticism and spirituality in decisive ways. So my own volume will introduce the treatise, The Mystical Theology, quoting it chapter by chapter, and then trace its uh, reception history through the translation into Latin, through the use by medieval mystics, through Martin Luther's criticism, and into some modern examples of appropriation, both positively and negatively. With these two examples, we hope to intrigue you to want to know more, and we invite uh, 
communication with the series editor in-house at Fortress, Michael Gibson, as we together launch a series called Mapping the Tradition. <laughs>